know, some people like the energy of the boxing gym. So they might want to go in there and let off some steam or, you know, some of the young kids might want to pass time or, you know, keep out of trouble. Come to the boxing gym. I've always liked boxing. I used to watch boxing all the time, my uncles and that, so I thought, oh yeah, this is this is pretty good stuff. And you know, as a young boy, kinda you know, always a bit, you know, loads of testosterone in it, so I love the boxing. Like when I when I went into the boxing gym, I was I was right. Where's I, when I went in there, you heard a bell going. I think, what the hell is that noise? Is that okay? Then you know I have to keep a straight face, you know, because <laughs> I didn't want to go in there being big like me, go into a boxing gym and be intimidated. Like, oh, oh. but I thought, oh my god, what's going on there? See people moving and making loads. And, ah, I'm thinking, what's that noise? What's that noise for? But you know, as you go along, you understand that that's breathing, you know, because you can't be just holding your breath; you just pass out. So you just know, ah, all that noise is like, oh. What's that? What's that noise? All right, that's breathing. All right, cool. All right, that's breathing. Why is he moving that way? Why is he going that way? Why is he doing so many sit-ups? Obviously, so you don't get winded, you know. You got to make the body strong. So it's a, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. As young boys, you always play fighting and stuff, and throwing punches and stuff, and you know, it's roughhousing. So then, what I used to do is then, after after a while, I stopped and I went to the Fitzroy Lodge. After doing weights, I used to do a lot of weights. And I stopped doing weights and went to Fitzroy Lodge just to learn how to box. I learned I know how to street fight, but I didn't know how to box. So you, just, you need discipline how to box because you can't go into a ring and be angry. Because if you be angry, you're going to lose, you're going to lock up and get tired quick. So it's all about control. So when I was boxing at the lodge, I had uh, two fights and then I had a ruptured patella tendon. And that put me out for like 18 months. Then after that, I was disappearing, coming back, disappearing, coming back, you know, not really training. And it takes 18 months to, 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 to heal up. And then when I did come back, I ruptured my, my, my long head tendon, uh, my bicep. So that got ruptured, ruptured as well. So then I just, that's it, I just packed it in. And ever since then, I get little pains here and there. So then uh, it's, a lot, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so I gave up and then started uh, helping out at the Fitcher Lodge. Uh, I was in prison for four years. Four. Yeah, so I was done four, four years. I got ten. Eight years, so I got ten. Uh, eight years. And then uh, two years run concurrent. So four years. Got arrested. And then boxing's gone out the window. Because, you know, I was, obviously I was winning. Before my injuries, I was winning. And then, you know, I got arrested and stuff. So now when I go to the gym, I'm telling them, when they come in there with all their little attitude, and I'm telling them, listen, don't waste your time doing all that crime outside because when it's time to go to jail, you're going by yourself. You've got to share a cell. You've got to be told what to do. Your toilet's right beside your, your, your head. You know, you've got, the same, you've got the same pillow that everyone else has used. Same dirty toilet, you know. You've got to be with, with all type of people. You, could, you might have a cellmate that's a rapist. And you know, you, you know, you might come out in the landing in the morning to get breakfast. And you could get attacked because you're, you're, you're living with him in your cell. So, you know, it's, it's dangerous. I, I let them know the little stories. I don't give them too much gory stories, but I just tell them the truth. Listen, it's all, it's all good outside and, you know, you think it's all good. But then when you get inside there, it's not the same. You know who your friends are. Guys shitting right, on, you know, right by your head. And the window's only open this much. So when they hear things like they're like, so that's a turn off. It's deep, man even down to going to the gym in, in prison. You know, everyone, when you get to jail, everyone wants to go to the gym. So when you get, when you get to jail, you're gonna say, you know, God, when's, when's gym? You know, so you could go a little from steam. What I used to do is go into the basketball court and there'd be a circle on the floor. And I used to stay there in the middle of the circle and shadow box. 
you know, and just move around in circles that way, move around that way, and just stay there for the whole gym session for one hour, because you only get one hour. Sometimes you might go gym late and get 45 minutes, and I'll do that. And keep going, keep going, because I was kind of quiet. They see me loads of gym sessions. Then one day I'll go into a corner, and I'll be shadow boxing in the corner, close range, uppercuts, hooks, rolling, rolling, rolling. Then I might back up a bit, you know, like as, as if I'm, I'm in a ring and it's work. But in my head, when I'm shadow boxing, I'm, I'm in my head, I'm saying, okay, somebody's in front of me. Huh, move that way, huh, move this way, huh, duck, huh. So I used to do that all the time, just to take my, my mind off things. So yeah, so uh, that's it, man. But uh, yeah, it's all a waste of time, man. That prison life is not no good, man. No good at all, man. You know, for me, I felt, you know, I felt when it was time to box, I felt inside, I felt, I felt nice, I felt good. A little bit of nervous, but I, I don't mind that adrenaline. Sometimes you get the adrenaline rush. Like when I first had my fight, my heart was beating so fast. When the bell went, I went bing, and it's just going. And then the guy came charging forward, and I thought, ah. And as I hit him, he, he was out. So in about 30 seconds, the fight was finished. But then after that, the referee told me, get back. And I was really tired. <laughs> so all that training for nothing, I was like, because I was holding my breath, wasn't I? <laughs> so, yeah, man, but boxing, yeah. It's a good feeling, man, as you put it. Back. <laughs> So most of the guys are coming in kind of street guys and they feel like, you know, I don't wanna they wanna be tough. But it's I have to tell them, listen, leave your attitude at the door. When you come through this door, you gotta change it up, be humble, be relaxed, you know. Because otherwise you're just gonna get hurt. You're gonna come in there, get angry, you're gonna swing a big shot, you're gonna miss, and you're gonna get hurt. They can be the toughest guy outside, the toughest guy on the street. But when you come into the boxing ring, when you come into the boxing gym, sorry, you're just a normal guy. You know, you might be tough outside, but when you come in the ring, you might get beaten up. You know, you might get beaten up because all type of people come into the boxing, boxing gym. You know, you might be aggressive out there, but when you come in the ring, you can't box. You know, you get some posh guy coming, coming around and moving around you, dancing around in circles, and you're, you know, you're trying to swing and you can't hit him. You'd be like, huh? And sometimes that's when they kind of, they humble themselves, you know, because they'll come into the gym more aggressive, come in there, have a bad, bad sparring session, and be like, all right, cool. Then they've got to come up with a new game plan. So in their head, they're thinking. And after, after they've sparred, I'll pull them aside and be like, listen, you need to relax. And then they start listening. Then I've got them. You're listening now, yeah? Say if, if a guy's, uh, you know, it's like if he's, if he's boxing, right, and he's got his front hand down. I'll be, I'll be, I'll tell him something like, you know, throw the jab and step that way a little bit. Then throw the jab at his hand, and then come round the back of his hand. And I bet you, I bet you hit him. And when they hit him, they're looking over to be like, yes, it worked. I'm like, you know, I'm motivating them. I keep them motivated, man. I keep them motivated. But I enjoy the boxing gym, don't I? So that's me. Because they're coming from outside, so you know, unless they, they're only young. So obviously you're not disciplined, you don't know what to do, you know, you might be out eating McDonald's or, you know, whatever, they might be smoking. You know, if you're smoking all the time and you come into the ring, you come into the gym, sorry, and, you're, and I'm telling you to do 10 burpees, 10 press-ups, 10 sit-ups, and, you know, you might start doing the burpees and you'll be like, oh, you're tired, well, I can't breathe because, you know, the smoke's clogging up your lungs. So, you know, you have to be disciplined, you know, you've got to listen and take advice. But like I said, I can only tell you what to do when you come inside the gym. You have to take it outside with you as well. You gotta just, you know, listen. So sometimes when they come, when the kids come in the gym, I'm like, "What do you do on the weekend?" So you know, I might be like, "Oh, no drinking," you know, just throwing that one out there. And they're like, "No, no, no, I wasn't drinking." I was like, "You're running, yeah? All right, I'm running. All right, no problem. All right, cool. So, um, all right, skip a couple rounds, and let's see. 
then I put them through a circuit and to see if they've been training. Then halfway through the circuit, they might start getting tired. I'm like, I thought you'd been running. What's going on? Oh, no, I didn't run for two weeks, you know? So it's all about, yeah, you, need, you need discipline, don't you? I think it's an art form there. Yeah. It is, yeah. It's just different styles, isn't it? You know, different styles of fighting. You can have a fight with a high guard. You can fight, you know, with the Philly shell. You can fight with your arms stuck out like that. You know, all confident with your hands down. Different, st different styles. To be ringside, it's like me getting in the ring myself because my heart's going, my hands are wet. I mean, my hands are, are, are sticking. I'm thinking, oh my God. For me, it feels like I'm going in the ring. You know, that's how, that's how it feels for me. You know, when I'm walking towards the ring, or I'm, or, or, or I'm even, even if I'm watching a fight and I'm there live, you know, it's, it's like for me, my hands are like, you know, even when they're coming out and the music's playing and you're, they're getting ready and you see them, or you see them in the back warming up, my heart's still going, it's the same. Same kind of feeling. That's the kind of feeling I get. Yeah, it's, intimidating. it's boxing, it's boxing, isn't it? It's not, it's, you know, it's not dancing, it's not ballet. It's an aggressive sport. So, you know, you are going to get, you know, guys, you know, up in the bloody crowds with balaclavas on and acting all tough and stuff, you know? It's a tough man's sport. It's not for, you know, it's true, you know, it's, it's aggressive. It's, you know, it's, you know, you get to punch someone, you break a nose or fracture a cheekbone, knock out a tooth, it's, it's tough. When I was young, we used to go into youth clubs. We'd go to one youth club, to another one, to another one. Now they all shut down. All the youth clubs, all the youth clubs are shut down. All the police stations are closed. <laughs> like, what's going on? Anarchy, like, you know, what's going on? This is like no police station, no police. You know, usually the police would just drive around and, you know, kind of half, like, kind of intimidate you. You know, like, pull around, pull up beside you. You all right over there? And you'd be like, uh, uh, uh. Or, you know, like if you think about coming out with a knife, you'd be like, oh, yeah, but there's so much police out here, I don't even want to carry it. But now, because all the police stations are closed, and there's no police, you don't see no police. So, you know, that's what's happening. So they're bored and they start up this, this gang stuff, innit? They need to keep those places open, they need to open up more, more youth clubs. They close all down, they need to open up all the youth clubs again. Open them all up, give all these little kids something to do, man. Because if you drive around, you see them all hanging around on the estates. I remember nearly every other estate had a youth club. Nearly all the estates have youth clubs. Now they're all closed. Kids are doing nothing. Rolling around, hanging around, you know, getting up to no good. They need to give, need to give them something to do. They've got nothing to do at all. Yeah, I wish I, I, wish I could um, rewind time, you know, and do it all over again. And, you know, not mess up and then, then I could be a superstar. <laughs> so yeah.